Hi everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa, I am The Crafty Author, and welcome to my quilting room. Today we are going to be making block number 11 in our sampler quilt. So this would originally be November's block, but since we are speeding up the process so that you all can get these done for Christmas gifts this year, we are going to be making blocks 11 and 12 this month. So this is block number 11. This is what it currently looks like. It's very, very cool, very easy to make. This one I have already gone ahead and squared up to 12 inches. So that's why the square in the corner is smaller than the squares here. So keep that in mind that when you square it up, these will become smaller on the ends. This is called a disappearing nine patch. This looks so cool when you get this design going in a quilt. I have actually made a disappearing nine patch quilt. Um, I did it for a charity um, auction giveaway and it turned out amazing. And so if you are interested in that, I actually have a playlist called Disappearing Nine Patch. <laughs> so go ahead and check that out. But for right now, this is what we're going to focus on right here. So how do we make this? Oh, this one is so easy and it turns out so cool. You're going to love this. Really going to love this. All right. You are going to need one dark piece of fabric, five by five. Okay, you can use a charm square as well. Um, remember, I'm using fat quarters that I have in my stash. So I'm just using these up. This is a Riley Blake um, pattern. All right, all of these are Riley Blake. I had a Riley Blake fat quarter bundle and that's what I've been using for my sampler quilt just so you know. You can use charm squares. You can cut these yourself. I cut these myself. I cut them five by five. If you're getting them from a charm pack, they might be five and a half by five and a half. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Or you can use yardage, or it's a really great way to use up scraps that you might have too, okay? So you need the one dark piece for your center. You need four light pieces, white, light, whichever, has to be a light piece of fabric, four of those, five by five. And you need four dark pieces. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to lay this out before we do anything, just so we know how this is all going to come together for us, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay my darkest piece in the center. So this will be my middle piece. Then I'm going to take my four dark pieces and I am going to put those around my other dark piece. corner to corner like so okay so you should have five dark pieces you can alternate these and make these different colors like I did in this one I used a dark polka dot um, and I used this pink polka dot and then I put the blue in the center so you can use different fabrics if you'd like to do that as well these are just the fabrics that I'm going to be working with then you're gonna take your lighter fabrics and you're just gonna put those in the corners that are missing some fabric. You want to make sure that you have nine pieces, hence the name nine patch. So you will have three rows with three in them, three, six, nine. Now what we need to do, now that we have all of this laid out, is we are going to sew these pieces to each other, okay? So I will take this to my sewing machine and I will sew this pink piece to the white piece. I will press that open towards my dark side and then I will sew this other piece right here. 
and I will press it to the dark side. Then I will sew my two lighter pieces to my darker middle piece in the center and I will push those seams towards the blue. And then when I come down here, same thing. I'm gonna sew these two pieces to my center piece and push the seams towards the dark side. I'm gonna put my pink piece from the top and I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch down. I am using a lead so that I don't get a bunch of nesting on the back side or on my uh, my project here. Then I'm gonna take the next one in the row, which is my light piece to my darkest center piece, and I'm going to do something called chain piecing. And I'm just gonna continue to sew this down. Then I'm gonna take the next piece, which is the third row, and I'm going to sew the pink onto the lightest piece. This is why you want to lay this out because this will go so much faster if you have all of this laid out in advance. Okay, so now we have the top, the middle, and the bottom. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim off this lead and we are going to press, we're gonna open this up and we're gonna to press towards the dark side, finger pressing, okay? Now we're gonna open up our center one and we are going to press towards the dark, that way, to the blue. And again, now our third row, we're gonna press this to the right side, which is to the darker pink side, okay? And now I'm just gonna flip this over and I'm gonna grab my bottom piece because now that I flip this, I know that I'm starting here on the bottom part. And because I'm right-handed, that's why I sew it like that. So now I'm just gonna use my lead to start again so that I'm not gonna get any nesting when I start sewing onto my squares here. They're gonna be perfect, right? And then I'm gonna grab the other yellow piece that was in the center to make this edge here and I'm just going to continue sewing I'm going to grab the pink and this is our last row because now all of our uh, now all of our squares are attached so now what I'm going to do is just press to the pink towards the dark side. I'm gonna press this one in the center towards the blue. Now this is making my seams go in opposite directions, so they're gonna nest very nicely, okay? I'm gonna press this one, my finger, that way. Just taking my finger and just rubbing it along there. Now I'm gonna flip this top part and my seams should line up exactly. Exactly, exactly. And they do. They're nesting just fine because I did not trim those threads in between. And now I'm just gonna start sewing. sure that you, you caught everything and I did this is what starting with the lead does is it eliminates that so that we don't get that kind of a nesting issue going on on this next one I'll show you how we do that and I'll show you the difference a lead is a scrap piece of fabric that you can cut as you can see mine is just really trashed right now um, and it's just a piece of scrap fabric. This one was from probably a binding that I was working on. And what you do is you just sew on it first before you uh, sew onto your project. Keeps your seams nice. So um, 
So if you have scrap fabric, just sew on it first and then sew onto your project. It also eliminates putting that in a trash. So you get more use out of it. Now I'm gonna flip this one over. As you can see, those threads are still attached, okay? And my seams are nesting rather nicely. Let me see if I can get you a close up of how that's sitting. Can you see that? One's opposite, they're opposites of each other, but how they're coming together, that is because we did not trim those threads. And um, so yeah, they're sitting really nice and snug with each other. That's what's gonna make our points perfect. And then my sewing machine decides to come unthreaded. Not sure why. Not sure why I did that. That was weird. It was not unthreaded. Just going to make sure that these are even. Okay, now that one is done. And now I will show you why we use the lead. So now you can see that there is no nesting on the front or the back. It's just clean. That's why we use a lead. You can use one if you want to, or you don't have to, but I prefer it. It's been pressed, and you can see that I've got the nine, all nine squares here. Now what we're going to do is we are going to cut this and the way that we do this is we line up right here on this seam right here and we want to line it up at two and a quarter inches so all I do is I put my ruler right here and I line up the quarter inch mark right on that seam and make sure that it's two and a quarter and it is and all I'm going to do Let's give it a cut. Lift that up carefully because you don't want to move your fabric. Then I'm going to line up right here along this seam here on this third row. So it'll be right there. And again, I'm going to line up two and a quarter. Okay. And I am going to cut that in half there. All right, so there we have it. You're gonna love this part, because this is the best part. All we do is take this top corner here, and we're gonna turn it in like that. And we're gonna take this bottom left-hand corner one, and we're just going to turn it like that. And that is how we get our disappearing nine patch. And you can see that. It's as simple as that. Now, there are a bunch of different variations that you can make with this, um, with this block. So, like, if you wanted all the blue uh, little squares in the corner, you could do that. You would just flip it like this instead. This block is very versatile, so you could do it like that. Or if you wanted to have all of your squares up at the top, you could do it like that and it would break it up and it would frame. So you can see the different patterns here that it's making, right? Uh, you could do something like like what we were just talking about. 
the disappearing nine patch. So this is how we're going to do it. Um, but certainly if you uh, wanted to do it a different way, you could. But for this tutorial, this is how we're going to do it. And I just wanted to show you how versatile this block really, really, truly is. So now all that I will do is I will take this and flip this right sides facing each other. This is my bottom square. I will mark this with a clip just so I know that this is number one, my bottom square, and that I will sew a quarter of an inch all the way down. I'm gonna flip the top one, and I will also use a clip, a green one, so that I know that it's the top. And now I will go to the sewing machine and I will just sew a quarter of an inch here, quarter inch here. Now I'm gonna sew the bottom. Now I'm going to press this way and I just kind of let the seam kind of dictate which direction it wants to go at this point and then I will press it that way the opposite direction now. Okay. And now I'm going to leave it attached right there just gonna fold this over and you'll be able to see that my seams are nesting you can see their opposite directions there and I'm gonna sew on my lead again Finger press. And it's perfect. All right. So that was super easy, right? And it turned out amazing. Look at how cool. It looks pretty neat, right? That was probably the easiest block we've ever done. You can see how my points have matched up almost exactly perfectly. Okay, they are perfect. So now you've learned a new trick. So this is a really good pattern to practice with, especially for like your um, getting things on point because it is such an easy block to make that it's easy to nest those seams. So I highly recommend that. So practice, practice, practice. And um, ta-da, looks cool. And this is the other one. Like I said, this one has already been trimmed because I, I trimmed it. Um, I have a bunch of practice blocks. So, yes, I always practice first. <laughs> so, that is it for me today. If you would like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and let others know that you like it because it helps it to get seen. Don't forget to click the little bell. You'll get notified each and every time that I upload an awesome new video. And keep on crafting. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.